Hi everyone, Alejandro here with Otter Robotics. And in this video, we're gonna go over some of the new features and the latest app update to the Explorer app. Welcome to the Flight Deck. Prior to having access to these features, you will need to update your Autel Explorer app to version 1.7.5 for iOS and version 1.7.10 for Android. You will be able to do this in the App Store and Google Play Store accordingly. You will also need to update your Evo 2 aircraft to the latest firmware version, which is version 2.5.12. Prior to performing any sort of firmware update, we recommend that you remove the propellers for safety reasons. Let's start off with the new gimbal adjustment feature under your gimbal settings. You will want to adjust your gimbal after you perform a gimbal auto calibration. You would want to adjust this if your roll, pitch, or yaw seems off in your video or picture. You can then tap the start button and you will now see the three different axes of your gimbal. You can tap the minus or plus button depending on how much you want to adjust each individual axis, either to the left, to the right, to the top, or the bottom. Something to keep in mind is that you can use elements both in the foreground or background of your image, such as buildings, the horizon line, subjects, or other objects to go ahead and make these gimbal adjustments. The camera and gimbal on your EVO2 aircraft is a sensitive instrument. So we recommend that you perform either a gimbal adjustment or a gimbal auto calibration after these scenarios. After a firmware update, after any sort of hard landing or impact, after an IMU calibration, or when removing and replacing a UV or ND filter. Another change we made was that we added a third axis data collection within the compass calibration of your EVO2 aircraft. This third access data collection makes your compass calibration much more accurate by increasing the level of information coming into the magnometer. This is especially helpful in high altitude regions and will help to alleviate any drift that you have in flight. The next feature that we added in these updates is the IMU calibration. IMU stands for Inertial Measurement Unit and uses the drone's force, velocity, and altitude to calculate where the drone is in any given space. You should perform an IMU calibration if you encounter any of these situations. When receiving the aircraft for the first time, after you perform a new firmware update, if you are flying several miles away from the last location that you flew at, or if you encounter any deviation from your flight controls. To perform an IMU calibration, let's start off by unfolding our aircraft and then removing the propellers from the motors. Under the flight control tab, you will see the IMU calibration option and then you'll tap on that. Prior to tapping Start Calibration, we'll want to turn the aircraft and have the orientation of the camera be facing you. After that, we will hit that Start Calibration button, and then you will follow the on-screen prompts. If you are performing the IMU calibration step correctly, the on-screen prompt will say Calibrating. If you are not, if you have the aircraft in the incorrect orientation, it will not say calibrating, and it will not do so until you correct the position. The next feature that we added is the obstacle avoidance quick switch toggle up at the top right hand corner of your camera view. If this is illuminated green, that means that your obstacle avoidance sensors are turned on. If those are illuminated red, then it means that your obstacle avoidance sensors are turned off. This can be really helpful if you have a quick change in flight environment, which means that you need to turn your obstacle avoidance sensors off or on, depending on how that situation changes. The next feature that we added is a flight control mode called indoor mode. This is an indoor flight mode that adjusts the aircraft's behavior and added sensitivity in case you have any accidental contact with objects within your indoor flights. Indoor mode is especially helpful when you need easier movements within tight spaces, but it's very important to ensure that you are using propeller guards prior to going into indoor mode. Please keep in mind that indoor mode is only available when you don't have any GPS connection to your EVO2 aircraft. As soon as you connect to any GPS satellites, you will be automatically taken out of indoor mode. To access indoor mode, we'll head into the settings menu up in the top right hand corner of the camera view. We'll tap on the flight control tab on the left hand side, and then we'll toggle on the indoor mode switch. A new intelligent flight mode that we added is hyperlapse. 
Hyperlapse will allow you to take a time lapse while your aircraft is moving, which allows you to get new dynamic shots. To access Hyperlapse, you'll go ahead and tap on the Intelligent Flight Mode tab up in the top left hand corner of your camera view. Then you'll tap on the Hyperlapse option. Within Hyperlapse, you will see a variety of different settings. The interval setting is going to allow you to change the time in between two pictures being taken. The video duration setting is going to adjust the amount of time that your video lasts. And lastly, you'll be able to adjust the speed of the aircraft within Hyperlapse itself. The last feature that we added is the YouTube Live. This gives you the ability to live stream your content directly to your subscribers on your YouTube channel. Please keep in mind that you do need a minimum of a thousand subscribers in order to be able to live stream on a YouTube channel. To access YouTube Live, you'll head into the settings menu in your camera view. You'll scroll down all the way to the general option on the left hand side. And now you scroll down on the right hand side and toggle on the live switch. You can then exit out of the settings menu and you'll see a small live button below your shutter button on that camera view. Once you tap on that, you will be taken into a separate screen which will ask you to log into your Google account. Once you've logged into your Google account, you will then be able to set the title of the stream as well as a small description and then click the next button. On the next screen, you will then see two options, quick or custom. If you tap on the quick option, It'll automatically create the stream for you on your YouTube channel, and all you need to do is enable that stream on the YouTube channel itself. If you click the custom option, you will have to create the live stream on your YouTube studio in your YouTube channel, and then you will have to put the RTMP address directly into your Ontel Explorer app. After that, you're live streaming to all your subscribers. Thank you so much for watching. This was a brief introduction into the new features and the new set of app and firmware updates. Let us know down in the comment section how you plan to use any of the new features or what you're excited for.